Welcome back. This, uh, for those of you who aren't just uh, tuning in, this is episode number 119. And uh, the cameraman was just asking me how much farther, and I think... Well, actually, is this number 119 of the bench, or this number 119 since we started? Oh, no, this is uh, 119 of this project, of the workbench. Right, so we did uh, a whole bunch of things. We did the assembly bench, we did the table saw, cut right. the sled, the whole bench. So I don't know what number we're actually on on the bench. But I expect within the next month we'll have this finished, because the tool tray... This arm is all we have left. Anyway, speaking of which, I was hoping to be able to get this drilled so that we could get that nut installed and know exactly where everything is going to be. But I could not find the two inch bit, so I had to order one. I've got two different sizes. We have to drill the one on the outside for the threaded rod, and then this is a two inch one that we'll use to uh, sink that nut into this arm. And the flange we'll have to do with a router because I'm not going to buy a bit just for that. I can easily do that with a router and a rub collar and a bearing. Anyway, I uh, had a big block of wood that I had found. You may remember from the last episode, and I thought maybe we could use that for this piece, but it actually wasn't even wide enough, and there was a lot of separation on the glue joints. It was an old block that I had kicking around. So I've got a piece of uh, 10 quarter maple that just happens to be the right width, and I can get the two pieces out of it. I noticed there's a lot of end checks. So I'm going to go over the chop saw first thing and cut into them and see if how far they go. We're going to have 8 inches inside here. But this piece goes in. Now this piece goes in with the grain running this way. So we have to allow for the seasonal movement. So we're going to use our triple splines on both sides. Plus we've got to do them on the outside of there as well. So I want to get that cut up so that we can, we can uh, glue it up. I had talked about stacking pieces doing a, a bunch of pieces and then gluing them vertically. I'm not going to do that because I can get what I need out of this. So I'll just glue two pieces horizontally and that'll give me the thickness. I'm going to go with a full four inch and we can machine that up afterward to accept the uh, vice portion that pushes against the side of the bench has a tail on the bottom side that runs in a track to prevent it from flopping around when you're, when you're turning the, uh, the handle. All of that can be done before we assemble it. Anyway, so I want to get that done. Um, for those of you who are just tuning in, as I said late, Frick, get a look at the dovetail. That turned out really nice. The bird's eye dovetail on the end. We're, we can go ahead and do this anytime as well, this uh, uh, wagon wheel vise. And our dovetails are cut for the back end. As soon as we get this last uh, end cap on, we can go ahead and get that tool tray and put those in. That's going to look really nice because we've got mahogany going out there against the uh, maple. So it would be a nice contrast. And we went in and we encased the uh, stretchers all in bird's eye. And there's a couple of coats of finish on there. It'll be one final coat. I still have to replace these walnut wedges. I decided I'm going to do them in mahogany as well. So a little more continuity instead of introducing a second wood. The other thing I want to do today it has a little bit of a just a break from what we've been doing is I want to go in and make the handles with the in, with the uh, caps for the two vices and I'm going to use the mahogany on the uh, handle with the bird's eye maple cap. I've got some really nice heavy bird's eye uh, for the end caps. But the first thing I need to do is go over and, and see if we're going to be able to salvage that piece of maple. So go over the chop saw. I need eight long by eight and a eight and three quarter wide and I can get the eight and three quarter out of this but I don't know okay so if I need uh, what did I say I need eight sixteen inches so I can cut off a fair bit of this and still be all right Alright, so the end checks in, don't go all the way through. Now I just want to whack this and see if it stops. Okay, I'm going to take another piece off just in case. I don't want to risk having something in there that isn't going to be sound. Alright, 
that's obviously good, no problem there. Now, I'll mill this up as one piece, and I'm gonna have to use the 16 inch wide jointer for that because this is obviously wider than my eight inch, it's nine inches. And then I'll surface it down, and I, I'm only gonna have one glue joint on there, so I want both pieces to be the same thickness. Now, I've gotta end up with four inches because I want this to be the same thickness as the dog strip. And my best bet for stability is to have both, the same amount of wood on both sides of the glue joint. So that's two and a half, so I'll end up taking that down. And just as we normally would do, we'll end up taking off, we've got it rid of two and a half, we've got it rid of a half an inch, we'll take a quarter from both sides. I gotta, Jake, actually, will you do me a favor and clean up that uh, 16 inch joiner so I can go over there and use that. I'd have all that stuff cleaned off of there. While we're waiting on that, we'll go ahead and start in on these uh, handles. Now, the only restriction here is I don't want the top of the handle to stick up above the bench. So if I've had it get in the way on my other bench. So this end, this uh, cap on the end of the handle can only be one inch. And as far as length goes, I think my other ones were about 10 inches. And that's going to give you all kinds of leverage. So there's no reason to have it any longer than that. So I've got a little bit of mahogany left over. I don't remember where we used this, but... And I still have, an, I still have enough for my plating because I want the... I may, I'm going to have the plate made out of mahogany as well. That's that piece of the vise portion that goes up against here completes the uh, shoulder vise. And I've got some other mahogany I can use on there. All right, joint this. Ready. Stuff is a little bit soft, but it certainly isn't... Uh, that doesn't make as big a uh, big enough deal to not want to use it for a vice handle. The maple would be a lot stronger. Putting that much torque on it, you ruin the vice before you break the handle. That opening, that will allow for an inch, inch and an eighth. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mill. I'm going to cut this at inch and three sixteenths. I shouldn't need any more than that. length on that. And I'm going to do uh, both of these just while I'm at it so that I'm not having to repeat this.
Okay. Now, depending on how much experience you have turning, if you want, you can cut these down to an octagon before you go to the lake. stick was falling down in here. So that one's got enough that I can actually catch the flat. You've got that riving knife on your saw, it'll save your butt. Okay, I'm going to uh, turn these round, and I think what I'm going to do, I've got a piece of bird's eye. As I said, those end caps on the uh, handles can only be about an inch thick, and this stuff is measuring inch and an eighth, I think, inch and a sixteenth. And I think what I'm going to do is actually turn a little, uh, I'm going to drill, turn these down, and then I'm going to drill a hole in these end caps, so that that'll actually set it in there, and it'll just hold it in position for when I put a screw in from the other side. You'll see what I mean when we get there, but I've got to find the centers on these. I've got a little uh, device I've had kicking around for a long time. got this. I don't always tr trust it. <laughs> so I guess that somewhere around there should be the center. Gets it close. We allow for we allowed for a little extra anyway. 
That was better. Jake, you get that already? Yeah. Okay, clean the whole thing off. Okay. Mine lathe is variable speed, which is really nice because you turn it on and you just it's direct draw air is a I don't know what it is. And I can adjust it whatever I need to. A lot of inexpensive lathes have a step pulley, so you've got to go in here and move the step pulley. Either way, when you turn in small diameters like this, you want greater speed because it's all about rim speed, not the not RPM. Okay, um, I'll just use my mallet or my uh, wrench to tap that. Depending on what the wood is, you may actually have to drill that to avoid splitting, but this stuff is soft enough. Lock that tailstock in. And that doesn't need to be excessively tight. You don't want to wear your bearing out. You to keep your tailstock or keep your uh, tool rest fairly close. And I've got it set just a little bit below half. Lock that down. Now I prefer to use a skew. And if you've never done any turning, this is a rather difficult tool to learn to use simply because it has a tendency to want to bite and dig into the wood. You want to have that flat rest on the uh, on the wood itself and that's what controls the depth of the cut. So put a little extra light on this. First thing I want to do is start back here and then just keep working back. So I approach, actually it's a little bit easier for me to show it to you when I, once I've got this round. of options today there's a there is a uh, series of chisels called are made by a company called easy wood and they use a uh, disposable carbide cutter now it's a scraping process but when the when the carbide is sharp it'll actually leave a fairly good surface I prefer to use the skew chisel because you can actually get an even cleaner surface now I want to set my I want to set my uh, calipers to the diameter. I'm going to set them a little bit heavy so that I can get it down close and then refine it. So I set about an eighth of an inch, or an inch and an eighth, I mean, that's really close. What I'll do is use my parting tool. Holy smokes, that's already... Oh, that might have, I may have already taken this too small. Forgot I didn't start with much. I'm just going to go in and make a real light finishing cut. Jake, you want to grab that uh, other handle that's... Whenever you take this out, if you know you're going to be putting it back in, you want to mark it somehow. Just because if you don't, it'll never uh, perfectly line up, or it often doesn't. Well, I want that to be able to fall through, so it's... That may actually be too thin. 
Yeah, well, it doesn't take long to make another one if I have to. So it's down to size here. All right, let me show you how this works. You rest that flat bevel on the wood, and then as the lathe, or as the uh, lathe spins, you rotate a little bit like this. You want to keep the flat. The flat is actually going to be your guide as to what's going to be cut. And it also supports the tool. And then you just start to pick up a shaving. You see that, Frick? Uh, yeah. And when you turn, you have to get good enough that you can actually watch out here. You don't want to watch down here where it's cutting because this is your profile. That's going to tell you whether or not you're shaping it the way you want. Perfect this a little bit. And I can hit that with sandpaper. It'll sand up really quick. That's a that's that's a good fit. I wouldn't want it any any more loose than that. Now what have I got here for some paper? Feels like about 220, maybe even 180. I'll hit that real quick. This wood is fairly coarse textured, so no reason to go any close, any uh finer than 220. Now if you want, you can improve that a little bit by just standing with the grain, rotating it as you go. And like I said, that coarse textured mahogany with sanding, 220 sanding scratches won't show anyway. All right, now, I need a, um, a pair of Dividers. What I want to do is drill a little hole, just a shallow hole in here, and I'll turn the end of those that handle down to fit that hole. And if I'm an inch and an, I'm, I should be a strong inch and a sixteenth. So an inch would be fine. I'm just wondering if that's flat enough to work on. I better. Cut a strip of that off and then uh, join it so I know it's nice and flat. Jake, you want to turn the air on, please? How are we for time for? Five minutes. <laughs> thicker end, so cut that off about an inch and a quarter.
Get this planer. and a half. And you'll see what I did on here. Just put a rubber o-ring in there so that when that goes down it absorbs the impact. Otherwise I found that I had to, had, to kept re had to keep replacing these because just doing that multiple times as it would spin around and drop it eventually would break that cap off. So I'm going to go an extra quarter of an inch. I didn't have that thick enough. Shoot. That was a stupid move. Inch and a quarter wouldn't be enough. What a waste. I'm hurrying. Okay, so if we're at an inch and an eighth and we want a quarter on either side, actually, I think an inch and a half is probably enough. Okay, I'm going to. Uh, Shut that down for a second. I'm, I may as well do the other three while I'm at it. Don't waste the time on the film. I'm, I'm using a one inch sawtooth and I just took it a second to go over and sharpen it. And I showed that not so long ago. You remember? And first episodes, we went through a whole section on sharpening that. So if you go back, you can find it. Now, I want to set this depth because I don't want to go much deeper than, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch. Shut that off for a second. This thing takes forever to adjust. All right, I'm just going to go in here and make these center marks a little more pronounced. Easier to find the center spur of the bit. making a fifth one in case you screw up on that. Now I'm going to I'm going to um, put these on with a screw simply because experience tells me that they occasionally get beat up. So it's easier to screw them on so you can replace them if you have to. And uh, it's also going to make it easier to turn them on the lathe so I will drill a hole all the way through. Are we going to make it back to the lathe in this episode? Right? Can I ignore you? You can. You shut me off. <laughs> All right. 
I'll, uh, I'll drill these through. When we come back, I'll drill these through. Take them over to the bandsaw, cut them out. Put them on the lathe and turn them. And uh, finish them off. I, want, I was hoping to get that section done for the arm, but we didn't get to that today. But we will next episode. See you shortly.